Hi guys, I'm Linda. And I'm Vicki. And we are Partners, Partners in Crime. Crime. Today we have our wine segment and I did pick up a Dark Horse Pinot Grigio. I did have, I have had the Dark Horse brand before, but I think I've had reds in the Dark Horse before. Mm -hmm. So we'll try the Pinot Grigio and see what we think. This is obviously my favorite wine as a Pinot. Fabulous. I do like it. Mm -hmm. um, it's I do like Pinot Grigio. Yeah, and this is from California too, so it is a California wine. Great. So we can recommend Dark Horse. I like I said, I believe I did have the um, the red, and that I liked as well. Mm -hmm. This one has um, notes of stone fruit and balanced crisp finish. So I don't know what stone fruit I is. I don't know what stone fruit it is either. It tastes like um, grapefruit to me. Um, the Pinot Grigios in general taste like grapefruit to me. It's a it's a mild wine. Mm -hmm. And um, if you're like me and you don't like very dry wine, this is a good combination mm -hmm. of slightly sweet and some nice mellow dry notes. Yeah. Yeah. So it is really, really worthwhile getting, I think. Yep. Yep. So today we're going to work on um, a couple of different cases. The first one was actually in our area. This was for Elisa Mandarak and her daughter, Devin. Mm -hmm. Lisa lost her life because this person who was a Dungeons and Dragons enthusiast, Caleb Farley, who was 21, reportedly considered her the embodiment of beauty he'd been, he'd been wanting to seize. Um, the way he met Lisa, not really met her, but the way he she was brought into his um, store. Yeah, basically he was working for his family's uh, children's clothing store right. in Collegeville, Pennsylvania. Right. And I will, the store is not there anymore, but I will go out there to show you because the strip mall is still there and I'll show you where this store was. This is the shopping center where Lisa and Devin did lose their lives. All the stores are different now, but this is the same strip mall that it had happened and that used to be the grocery store right there. So September 12th of 1995, um, Lisa went to the store. She told her husband, James, Jim, um, that she was going to the store with Devin. He was watching football, so he didn't go with them, but she did tell him specifically where she was going. They lived in Limerick, Pennsylvania, and it was only about 10 minutes away, five to 10 minutes away, so it wasn't too far for her to go. Mm -hmm. When this, she went, go ahead. I'm sorry. This was in Collegeville. Pennsylvania. Collegeville, Pennsylvania was a store. They right. lived in Limerick, Pennsylvania. Right. And the store was for children's clothing. Correct. It's called Your Kids and Mine. And she went in there. There was another woman in there who left because I did see uh, an interview where this woman did say that she saw Lisa go into the store, but she was leaving. And then Caleb realized that she was in there by herself. It, it was only him, her, and Devin. Right. So he quickly locked the door and then went after Lisa. Um, Lisa did fight back. She did not, you know, she knew something was going to happen. He did um, take her and he strangled her. Then after he strangled her, he actually then strangled 
um, Devin, their daughter, who right. was 19 months old, I believe, at the time. Right. And Devin was crying and scared. Mm-hmm. So that's why he did it. That's yeah. That's why he, he went after the baby, too. Yeah. So I think he was attempting to sexually assault Lisa, but she kept fighting so much that he wound up killing her. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. He did actually sexually assault her after she did pass away. And um, he did take her and her daughter away from the premises. When the police got to the store, what happened was Lisa didn't come back. It was getting close to dinner time. It was getting late and they knew something was wrong. So they did go to the store. It wasn't open. They did go to, there was an Acme grocery store. They went there to see if she was in there. They had her paid, she wasn't in there. So they knew something was definitely wrong at that point. When the police did go in to search, the, they didn't find them, the bodies of Lisa or Devin, but when mm. the police went in to search, um, they did find her car outside in the parking lot. Right. And um, they did find stacks of pornography stained with what appeared to be blood and long black hairs that were consistent with Lisa's in the vacuum cleaner. So Caleb did wind up vacuuming the store. There were spots that were cleaned up on the um, rug. There was also oh, uh, there was a large damp spot on the carpet, mm -hmm. and um, that was determined to actually be saliva from mm. Devin, the baby. Aww. So, um, the police also noted that there were peepholes drilled into the dressing rooms. Fairley was charged on September 12, 1995, with the murders of the mother and daughter. When police did question Farley, he was wearing a thick coat of makeup on his face. When the police asked him to take that off, he had a bunch of scratches on his face and you could see that he was scratched from a woman mm. trying to fight, mm. fight him back. Um, he said though that he received them in a mosh pit attending an electric hellfire club concert. It was at a local cl club called The Asylum. I don't right. really know where that was. I don't Do know either, no, but he w claimed to be with a friend of his. Mm -hmm who the police did interview as well. Okay. So when hikers um, were in Valley Forge Park, which again is close to us, they did discover Devin's uh, body dumped on the hill, dumped over a hill in Valley Forge National Park. He was charged with the two counts of murder and one count of abusing a, course, uh, a corpse, um, Caleb was. Mm -hmm. So then, he did enter, they still hadn't found Lisa at this point, and Caleb entered a plea. Um, well, he asked prosecutors not to seek the death penalty if he showed them where Lisa was. Lisa's body was found at an industrial park not too far from Valley Forge Park as well. I know that when um, the people found the baby in the park, they had said, at first they thought it was a doll. Mm. Yeah. You know, they didn't really think much of it until they got a better look. Right. And, uh, oh, can you imagine how yeah. horrifying oh my gosh. Oh, And terrible. the whole reason that Lisa was targeted was because he, Caleb, was so into this Dungeons and Dragons. He also had a sweatshirt of a vampire, I believe, uh, assaulting a woman who actually looked like Lisa. So this, she had the physique and the dark uh, hair, dark hair, the light skin. Right. Um, She's and, beautiful. Yeah. It, she just looked like the people in this Dungeons and Dragons and all of these video games and all that kind of stuff. So right, right. when she came in, he just, you know, he was crazy to begin with, but he just snapped when she came in. I can't believe that was 1995. Um, that yeah. long ago. Yeah. The residents of Limerick, Pennsylvania raised more than $250,000 over a two-year period to create the Mandarak Memorial Playground in honor of Lisa and Devin. Mm -hmm. It was dedicated on September 12, 1998, and that is such a big park in the area, and I will go out there and take video of it. Actually, I was just there last year. My niece was playing softball in one of the softball fields mm -hmm. that are attached to
a little dedication to Lisa and Devin. Even on this early chilly windy day, there are still kids playing at the park. To that, so mm -hmm. that is a big thing that was put in the area. Um, Lisa was also laid to rest, as well as Devin, in a St. Patrick's Roman Catholic cemetery in Narstown, Pennsylvania, and I will also go out there and take video right. um, and find their headstones. Um, and that Patrick Cemetery in Narstown, Pennsylvania. is also not very far from us mm -hmm. so that whole scenario of Limerick and Collegeville and Norristown mm -hmm. it's all probably within a 15 mile yeah. radius to yeah. where we are right now it's in southeastern Pennsylvania outside of Philadelphia so right, right. and I know a lot of people know where King of Prussia Pennsylvania is mm -hmm. Valley Forge is so close to that as well as all these other places within right. like you said 15 miles do you, have, have, so. you, have you read anything about her husband and how he's doing now? No, no, I haven't looked into James at all. I wonder yeah. how anyone would cope with that, with that kind of loss. Yeah. And having that memorial, if he's still in the area, mm -hmm. if that's a good thing or a bad thing for him, mm -hmm. to be constantly reminded of it, I don't know. Well, I think he was the one that wanted this. Oh, did I he? I do believe that uh, he was the one that wanted to put this in honor of them, mm -hmm. and I think it's this, uh, It's probably, um, he feels a big sense of pride knowing that it His a lot community, of, you right. see kids there, it's, it's always packed there, so yeah. it's huge. Yeah. Um, when they did search Farley's room in his mother's house, they revealed an extensive collection of pornography and, like I said, a black sweatshirt depicting a vampire attacking a young woman who did look like Lisa. Um, I know that so, his, uh, I know it was her brother or his brother was interviewed mm -hmm. after this happened, and he said that um, Jim. Mm hmm was never the same. Yeah, yeah. Never the same after this. It so. would be very hard to um, get past something like oh that. Oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah. Um, it, about uh, Caleb, there were a couple of other stores. Like I, I was saying in our other video, I think I was at the store. I believe I probably did visit the Collegeville store before. I can't remember specifically. They also had another store in Audubon, Pennsylvania, mm. which was one that I frequented more because my kids were at that age where I can buy their clothes and they had really nice clothes in there mm -hmm. that were affordable. Mm -hmm. So, um, I didn't realize they yeah. had another store that it was just in college. Film. Yeah, no, there was one in Audubon right. as well. So I know it was his mother and he mm -hmm. who um, worked at the store. Yes, I believe so. I think it was only family that worked there, so I don't know. If more? more I don't know if there were more family that worked there. Okay. I, yeah. So I know when Caleb was alone in the Collegeville store, mm -hmm. 
I'm thinking maybe his mother was at the other store. Could have been. Because yeah. she wasn't there. Right. And I have seen in our area, obviously, when this story played, I do remember the woman, his mother, and I believe that was the woman that I might have had interaction with right. in this other store that's what ma leads me to um believe that i did talk to them i don't you know i can't remember someone like caleb but um he wasn't too far from my age because when my kids were young i was still in my early 20s as well mm -hmm. so 1995 yeah I, I would have been in um you know getting close to 30 but um, 1995 is when my daughter was born. Yeah, and my daughter, my youngest, was born in 96. So right, we have right. daughters a year apart. Right. And, um, um, yeah, I was um, pretty old when I had <laughs> my daughter. So there's a big age gap between us. A little bit. Not I'll, a big one. Yeah, it's a big a little bit. Yeah. But, yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah, that was my youngest daughter who was born at that time. Mm-hmm. They did say that... Um, Caleb had a hard time growing up. He did have, um, you know, he was a little heavy, so he got teased with that. And I believe his brother, his six-year-old brother, um, well, it says that he lived with his parents and a six-year-old brother and two preschool sisters in Gulf Mills, Pennsylvania. Um, I believe that his brother, he did have another brother that I believe died when he was young. Really? Um... I did read that, mm -hmm. so uh, let me just double check. Wow, what a yes. horrible story. Neighbors said Farley never got over the 1989 death of his four-year-old brother, David, who accidentally shot himself with his father's uh, gun. Oh. Yeah. Wow. He kept to himself staying in his room with vampires, costumes, and outfits from Dungeons & Dragons, a, mini a medieval fantasy game. Um... Yeah, so there was something that affected him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there was a Melissa Arcadia who said she casually dated Farley and described him as intelligent but in inner pain and afraid of women. So. Now, I know the friend that was interviewed who Caleb claimed he was with in the uh, nightclub mm -hmm. said, no, they weren't in any nightclub. Um, oh. He actually was with him that night, but he said they didn't go to any mosh pit. Yeah. They weren't, you know, I don't know exactly what they did. Right. But they weren't there. Yeah. So that was his excuse for having the scratches on his face. Right. I right. mean, they did show a picture. And Forensic Files is also um, one of the um, magazines or the crime um, crime shows that mm -hmm. did do mm -hmm. a story on this. Mm -hmm. So... Um, they did show a picture, and like I said, it is somebody going like this, scratching wow. his face. Ugh. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's uh, I such know, a I was, shame. I was so affected by that story. Mm -hmm. um, it just stuck with me. Right. It still has. You know, mm -hmm. when I hear it, it brings back all those feelings that I had when all that occurred and mm -hmm. reached the public. It was just horrific. Yeah. Just horrific story. So, he's in prison now. Yes, he is. And I believe he was trying to... Um, I'll have to look more into this, but I briefly touched on him trying to get out of jail. And I think like 2012, he was trying to get his, his um, sentence appealed or overturned saying something about he was 21 when this happened um that his mind actually and he was actually he didn't have any lawyers doing this he wrote all the documents to try to oh. return this mm -hmm. and he said something about how a child's mind isn't fully developed until they're past 21 or something like mm -hmm. that so mm -hmm. it was definitely a stretch he's still there so he's not like out of prison um at this get, point did and he get I, a life sentence do you know yes he yes. did he's in labelle pennsylvania um he received two life sentences oh. for that i don't know where labelle pennsylvania is mm -hmm. but he's in a state correctional facility there yep so it's, i guess he uh doesn't do well with the other prisoners i don't know because 
I've always heard. He's a child killer, yeah. Yeah, I've always heard that mm -hmm. once you're labeled a child killer, yeah. you're yeah. in a bad way with the other prisoners. So. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I mean, karma, it yeah. comes back because when you have people in jail for the rest of their lives, they're not too worried about what they do to someone else. Right. And he, what are they going to do? Give them another life sentence? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and if he's got two life sentences, I'm sure there's no possibility of parole, parole. ever. Yes. So he was 21 in 1995. <coughs> um, I don't have a calculator, which I probably should to try to figure well, out how old he would be now. It's, it's 25 years later. Mm -hmm. So how old was he then? 21? 21. Yeah. So he's probably 46. Yeah. 46 years old okay. now. I'd like yeah. to see a picture of him now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. So that was, um, that was something local that we actually did hear about. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we do a lot of videos on um, these cases that are so far away. And then it sparked my memory um, about this case actually in our local area and something that we've had to, well, you know, we've been around the where these things have happened. And right, right. Heard so much about it. Mm -hmm. And um, there is still crime yeah. in southeastern Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yep. So we might come up with some other ones to present. Uh, not that we have anything against southeastern Pennsylvania. No, no. <laughs> but this, it's relatively peaceful for the most part. For but the you most have this part. craziness sometimes. Right. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah. yeah. So. But that's it for Lisa. Like I said, I will put all the videos that I find um, on, so you could see that we are local. Now, is that going to be part two of the videos? Or no, I'll, I'll put, put it the all videos in, in this one. Yeah, while we're okay. While you you're watching this, I'll show you the places that I'm talking about. All right. Yeah. Sounds so. good. All right. Well, I guess until next time. Bye. bye.